Hey everybody, welcome to the 2024 trade show. You're gonna see how we record the Rule Your Pool podcast here, and we honestly have no idea what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna try something new today. Episode 133, coming to you live from the Northeast Pool and Spa Show. Let's go. Welcome to Rule Your Pool, the podcast by Arenda that explains and simplifies pool chemistry so that anybody, regardless of experience, can understand it. I'm your host, Eric Knight, bringing clarity to these subjects so that you can bring clarity to your water. If you're ready to rule your pool, then let's go. So we have a guest here from River Pools, and now Thursday Pools, Christian Shirilla. Is that correct? That's it. Christian, welcome. I've seen you on a lot of YouTube videos when I was doing a bunch of fiberglass research for our website, talking about issues that we've seen. Almost every YouTube video that I could find during that research process had your face on it. And I got to say, it's a nice change from seeing my face on YouTube. <laughs> and Jared would also Surely agree. not my face. I don't like seeing my face. But I've heard a lot about Christian, and I've heard a lot about River and Thursday Pools, which is pretty exciting because... I hate to break to everybody here, but we are not fiberglass guys. I know it's shocking, but just water guys. we like to rely on experts in those fields to get our answers and lean on heavily. So Christian, welcome to the Rule Your Pool podcast. Thanks for having me, fellas. And Jared, and I, I have to say, I think you are the star of the show. And sure. I'm proud to be the second listener. Yeah. How many listeners are you guys up to now? Well, if after this one, we're gonna lose a few, I'll tell you that. Uh. That's true. I'd say thank you, but my cat blue and now scarlet might have something to say about that. Yeah, yeah, they are the stars. You know, people like seeing them. I get it all the time. But so we're here to talk a little bit of fiberglass. Let's Uh, do it. Basically, you are recommending to your customers use our app, correct? Well, first of all, we're fiberglass guys. We're not water chemistry experts, right? We we make the pool, and the dealers install the pool. Okay. Right. So, but when it comes to pool chemistry, there's lots of information out there, and we do point customers your way because you guys have a you have a way of breaking down a very complex topic into uh, a consumable manner, so the the customer can actually understand what's going on with their pool to protect that finish and enjoy swimming in it. I would say the same thing about you and your YouTube videos that I learned more about fiberglass in like you know four minute chunks. Things like flexion, what is a gel coat? How does a gel coat actually get applied? It's just great, great work with that. And obviously we spent a lot of time doing video marketing as well. And we're glad to have you here because we went up, Joe and I actually, Jared was not invited. We didn't tell him about it. Unfortunately, I'm pretty disappointed I wasn't invited. You heard about it. I heard it was awesome. We went to your plant in Fortville, Indiana. It was a great meeting. Incredible. I mean, this building is just massive. And the amount of technology involved within all the things that you you and your company and Bill have learned over all the years of fiberglass manufacturing. It's just insane, the productivity that can happen in a building like that. So tell us a little bit about how River Pools was, and now that you're part of Thursday Pools, what does the future look like for your company? Yeah, uh, so the plant itself is amazing, and it feels like every time I head up there to visit, it's expanding once more. Uh, But just to give everybody sort of a background here, the two brands were separate companies at at one point. Uh, You had River, who focused heavily on consumer education and and built its name around that. You had Thursday, which had unparalleled manufacturing capabilities and skills. And then the merger, which happened a couple years ago, right around the time of COVID, really brought what I viewed as two powerhouses together, right? Two powerhouses in their own right. And so now both brands are owned by Thursday Pools, LLC. So if you think of Toyota and Lexus, right? Right. Two brands. Two, under the same two, company. two brands under the same company. That's what's going on now. Do y'all fight over which one's the Lexus? <laughs> no, it's actually pretty clear. I, I think the River brand leads more <laughs> towards Toyota and the adventure side of things, right? Very nice. We know who we are, but the two brands are completely different from each other. Different products, same manufacturing quality and process, but uh, the models are different. The brand is completely different in the eyes of the consumer. Well, hold on. You say they're different products. Now, the mold shapes are slightly different, right? The molds but are different. they're still fiberglass. What makes them different? Yeah, so the, the two brands do not share molds. So you're not going to find a, a mold or a model on the River Pools brand and then find it on the Thursday Pools brand with a different name. Got it. But it's the same fiberglass materials, same gel coat. S- same manufacturing process, same manufacturing materials. Cool. Well, it kind of reminds us of Asa and Arenda. Well, we're retaining our brand. We were a lot smaller company, and, and I, I remember going up there and just the sheer manufacturing power that we saw in that warehouse was just unbelievable. 
yeah. hearing what it was like before. It's just fascinating to see what can happen when you actually put the horsepower behind a brand like River. So congratulations on that. Thank you. How is this show for you guys? I mean, who shows up here that is either buying your stuff or maybe you already have an established set of dealers? I don't even know. How yeah, so we've got a base of dealers and we've got some franchisees around the country. All are the installers of the products we make. We're here to meet and greet with them. Uh, we're here to find more installers that want to sell and install fiberglass pools that we make. And the show's been good so far. It seems to me like the foot traffic is up. The show floor feels a lot bigger. We've got another day and a half to go. One of the things that we've done recently, which is how we met, is talking about that water is water regardless of the vessel. Now, there's different ways that water can interact with the vessel, but I am blown away by the amount of research and development that I saw in that factory. It's unbelievable. It's like a whole laboratory of just unparalleled fiberglass knowledge that I didn't even know existed. So I look forward to learning a lot more from you. I look forward to being up there for your event. Was it February or something? Yeah, you're coming up next month. Yep, next month I'll be there. I'm looking forward to that. It should be nice, warm, and balmy at the time in Fortville, Indiana. But sure it will be. <laughs> I, do, I do have a question on a call and email that I get regularly, I would say. All right. Customer calls me and says, I have scale on my pool, I've added this, I've kept things balanced, but it's not going away. And I said, well, it could be your gel coat. How does a customer remedy a gel coat problem? Or is there a remedy? Well, it really depends on what caused the gel coat issue, right? Is it something that's sticking to it or was the gel coat actually bleached out? And both of those situations can happen. This really leans into the educational material you guys put out there. It is, the, is the surface etched or is something adhering to it? Let's assume it's not adhering and that it's actually a breakdown of the actual gel coat. So that, is that permanent damage? And if so, is there a fix or do you just have to? It would be permanent damage and it can be fixed. There are a number of products out there that are not gel coat that can be applied. There are new products being developed and tested now that are Recode materials, much like paint, but they're not, it's not a gel coat product. Okay. Uh, so there are solutions if you encounter this with your fiberglass pool. And again, awesome. we're not fiberglass guys, don't want to pretend to be, but I at least want to know where I can go to find an answer. Because like I said, I'm always like, well, I don't know, because if it's your gel coat, I don't know where to call. Yeah. I say call your manufacturer, That's, but I just want to make exactly sure right. that if I do that, there's actually going to be a real answer there. Yeah, well, we would always say that you should call the manufacturer of your pool if you have an issue. They can help diagnose what's going on. And in the case of a river or a Thursday pools, our warranty department is up to date with the latest products that are available and can help guide you towards the best solution for you, right on. whatever that may be. Always awesome. diagnose before you prescribe. That's Absolutely. A good, good thing. Well, I was very impressed. I appreciate you being here and look forward to working more with you guys. Yeah, Eric, Jared. Awesome. Good, good to meet you, man. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Christian. Have a good one. Thanks. Enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Thank you. We'll hang out later. Yeah, yep. we'll see you guys. Do you want to do a quick intro? Uh, we just did an intro. Oh, we did. We just did an intro. What do you mean? An intro for this episode? You don't even listen to the episode you're actively recording. You don't want to do an intro for the I episode? Just did. I hope you're still recording this. Listen, he's standing right here. He's been holding a microphone. We just did an intro before Christian sat down, and you're telling me you didn't even hear it. Oh, that. crap. Then we need to start before Christian showed up. Act like Christian wasn't even here yet. <laughs> I'm not editing this out, Jared. We can slice it and, and move it. Not doing it. Let's get somebody else to talk to, though. Hey, Terry Arco. Terry. Have a seat, my man. We're already rolling. Hello. Yes, we are. Do you are have we any rolling? idea what we're about live? to talk about? Um... I have no idea whatsoever. So what I'm going to say is we are completely screwed up right now because we're arguing over the intros and splicing stuff together, and Eric's just making me mad, so I'm sorry you walked in <laughs> in a time where there's a little tension between us right now. So no, it's all right. It's all right. Here's the thing. Jared just tried in the last 90 seconds to become the host of the Rule Your Pool podcast. Okay. Well, I feel well. like I was doing a good job it's Christian. Not, it's not going well. It everybody. seems like I got to be the buffer. Thank you. Between, <laughs> I'm the total alkalinity. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Between you too, guys. So how are you enjoying this show? This has been the first time in a few years since the pandemic and all that that I've been here, but I used to come here a lot uh, before then. The question um, is why? The show is tremendous. It's yeah. amazing. Uh, the engagement of people that are here, the numbers of people that yeah. show up, and they're serious. They want to get educated. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what makes this show. And I mean, you know, what's going on here on the show floor as well. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, you know, 
there's there's engagement. There's people that are interested. The big players are here. Yeah. The people that are serious are here. All the all the way around. It's a great it's big a great classrooms. Show. Lots of education. I'm yeah. I'm always impressed by that because most shows. I mean, they have classes. Don't get me wrong, but it. It's hard to put 300 people in a room, and yet this show does it routinely. They do it very well. Very Terry, well. You taught a class this morning. Yep. Eric's teaching a class. Miguel's teaching classes. So we have multiple classes that yep. we teach at this show, and quite honestly, I think we could all agree that's where we get the most satisfaction. Yes. Because we have influence on how people do things, and hopefully they're educating themselves clearly, and we're making them better, and that's why we do what we do. With the multiple number of classes they have, oh yeah, the great thing about it is they're, they're still all relatively full. Yeah, you know, so you're never talking to a smaller audience. You've got a good audience. You've got a good number of people, and that just makes it all that can, much better. Yeah, but, but can you imagine if Jared signed up to teach a class that <laughs> nobody would show up? That, 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 see, Hold that on, might be, brother. That might change things. I don't know. Guess <laughs> who's teaching a class at the Southwest Pool and Spa? That's show. true. He Ooh, is you're teaching a class. They let he you. He is. Do that. So I'm teaching it with Ryan Rickaby our sales manager there and I'm co-teaching it with him okay. and uh, we haven't prepared for it one bit. <laughs> but that doesn't surprise me. I can't remember the last time that we prepared for a podcast. So I went into your class an hour ago to try and get some pointers for maybe I want to do this in our class and I couldn't stomach it anymore. I had to walk out. I know. I saw that. I know you, you didn't. didn't. You didn't last eight. Terry days. lasted the entire time though. But what were your thoughts of the class? It's certainly. Uh, it was a class that we that I haven't heard yet. That it was honestly the title was great, and I think the <laughs> the content is great. The teacher, yeah. on the other hand, not so great. Oh. <laughs> what were your thoughts, Terry? I thought it was great from the standpoint of you come here and it's kind of everything's uh, technical, chemistry, equipment, all that sort of thing that everybody gets overwhelmed with, I think. Um, and you were teaching about how to be a better business person, how to be a better service person, customer service, how to be a better person overall. And I thought you had some really good points. The main thing that came out of it that I thought was really good was the whole idea of engaging the customer and what you do, taking them poolside, walking them through, yeah. uh, talking about maybe there's something different or special that you as a service company are gonna provide them, and you talk to them about that. You bring that kind of value and that service, you can you can get paid what you're worth. Yeah. So the class was stop servicing pools, start servicing people. Yeah. The message is, if we are only doing what everyone else does, we become a commodity. That, that commodity is something that is indistinguishable primarily from other services, at least to the customer. Now we may think we have differences, but if the customer doesn't see them, they're irrelevant, right? So how do we not be a commodity? And I bring up things like let chlorine be the commodity so you don't have to be. You can always rely on it to do what it does. Our chemicals, the same thing. What I'm curious to see, Terry, since this is your first show with us out of the hostile territory, my yeah. question is, in the interactions with the customers who have come up to our booth, what is your overall impression of how they view the Arenda brand? Very positive on the Arenda. And in the classes, I saw that too. There are lots of people there that are now using your products. California, they hate us, but <laughs> <laughs> but but it but seems here. like it seems like you guys have very solid relationships with people here, and that's definitely shown and coming out and things that people have said. People have approached me even without you guys being around, and they find they found out that we're connected, and they say they really like a Brenda. They like the um, the support that they get. The you talked about having your back yeah. in that class. Yeah, absolutely. The people really believe that Brenda has their back. So um, at do. least the people that talk talk to me. Um, I had people in my class yesterday, I did a all day uh, pool chemistry training institute class, and several of them that knew again that we were connected, yeah. uh, mentioned that, um, and that they were, uh, the whole thing, the four pillars, they were involved with that, Arinda Academy, and uh, that that was really a solid thing. Well, before you go here, we have more guests to sit down. Okay. I'm really looking forward to revamping our educational program, our curriculum, and really dialing in not only the things that Bob Lowry left behind with his legacy, but revamping it, revitalizing it. Like, let's make Absolutely. sure that it's all cohesive because there are a lot of different opinions and let's get to the facts of it. Yeah. And I think we can create something great. And I'm really looking forward to doing that with you in the Absolutely. next few months, really. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. I, you know, I always say, reinvent yourself. Tomorrow you want to be a better version of yourself than you were today. Absolutely. And that's what we're heading towards. Thanks, you guys. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, you can pause that. we got to find someone else to talk to. Are you rolling? Jonathan Heller, all the way from Israel, thank you for being back. I've seen you here for the past 
three or four years in a row. Is that right? Could be more think, than that. I think this I is like, my seventh year. Yeah. Yeah. When did you first start talking? It had to be pre-COVID, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. talking about seven years ago. I think it was the first time I, I actually wow. met you guys. Well, I remember and, uh, you came to us with the mikvahs, which I did not know what they were. How would you describe a mikvah? So a mikvah is a Jewish ritual bath. You fill up a bath with a few thousand gallons of natural rainwater or aquifer, whatever it's going to be. They fill it up. It has to be natural water. And then people go inside that water for purity reasons. They go in for just a few seconds, actually, before they pray, before there's a whole bunch of different yeah. reasons of uh, Judaism. And every single... Jewish center has to have a mikvah. It's the first thing you have to build, actually. The first thing a Jewish community has to build before a synagogue is a mikvah. You're synagogue allowed to sell a synagogue to fund building a mikvah. Just understand how important it is. That's how important it is. Yeah. So this is something, how, so if I, if I'm in the faith, how often am I actually using this mikvah? Every day? Is it once a week? What so is different sects within Judaism go on different, uh, I mean, let's say the Hasidim, there's a lot of Hasidim, which are more the ultra-ultra-Orthodox, they go every single day before they pray. So every male above the age of 13 has to go on a daily basis till the day he dies before he prays. So you could, as you can imagine, there's a lot of these mikvahs that are popping up. It's a growing demographic, yeah. and that's uh, what we do. So we uh, develop and provide solutions for purifying that water, which is far more complicated because there's all these restrictions okay, from the so Jewish what law. What are the restrictions that go into building a mikvah that so there's about, we don't understand? About like 50 it. books worth, if you want to have more happy, I'll send you a picture but, of that. It's very like, complex. It's, it's very complex because you can't disinfect it with chlorine, right? It has no, to be No, so you water. can use chlorine. The, the, the harder process is actually the filtration because okay. you're not allowed to remove the water from that body of the ritual bath. Okay. So you're not allowed to take the water out. So you have to purify. So all of our systems, actually, which are approved by the Israeli chief rabbinate, and they go through, a, I mean, a whole slew of different rabbis, the water never leaves the ritual bath. So all the water has to be purified within that body of water. This is thousands of years old, this ritual. Yeah. Now we yeah. have technology with circulation systems and all that. 100%. You still have to obey. I mean, it's a fascinating issue. And I remember you put us in touch with some people here many years ago, and Harold and I went into Brooklyn. That's and right. went into several of these synagogues and saw these for the first time. And they're, they're so different from anything I've ever seen. That's and right. boy, was there a lot of soap and shampoo on the wall of all these bather products. And you could just see the oils on the top of the water. And we did put enzymes in one of them. Oh my gosh, did it bubble up. I still have photos. And some of the challenges, like you have to get very creative because you cannot do conventional water treatment for something that otherwise could be easily treatable. But because you're in this situation where you have to use that water in a certain way, your hands are somewhat tied. That's Is that correct. A statement? That's 100% that's correct. And everything that you'd use in a standard situation becomes complicated and it has to be actually approved by different rabbis. There's so many different intricacies that have to be analyzed. So then there's your business. Yeah. Your business, I mean, I can tell you're a smart guy, unlike Jared, and you, know, like, you have a lot of ideas on how to do it. I mean, he's a genius. He's just brilliant. He, he's I'm so just smart. Don't give him that much credit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but you're doing a lot of technology. Give us, I mean, I'm, you don't have to publish to the world. Sure. We have at least 206 listeners now, we think. We think. So Solid. Well, uh, when we finish, that. I'm going to sign up. I'll be 207. Oh, oh so you've never heard our be... podcast. That's funny because Jared hasn't either. So. No, okay. no. He's I listened to probably two or three episodes. Whatever, Jared. They're okay. really so, great, man. So what does your company great. actually do? What do you My company is called Mikvatech, and we have various solutions. Let me just give you a little bit of rundown. These mikvahs, these ritual baths, can range from a private one in a person's house, where he himself is going to use it every morning before he prays, to the largest one in the world is actually here in the U.S., where they have about 5,000 people per day in a few of these pools. Where is that one? It's near Muncie, in upstate New York. Well, not upstate, but New York. compared New to New York. York. Yeah. Okay. Um, and they have very high bather loads and a very, very small volume of water. What kind of volumes are we talking? You could go metric if you want. So that particular mikvah has six ritual baths. The largest of it's about 50 cube, which is the largest one. It's about 13,000 gallons, maybe something like that. They range from about 1,000 gallons to that would be probably one among the largest in the world. And you'd have to clean that water. Remember those 5,000 people would be there within a few hours. So 
5,000 so, people in a Well, they have six of those. Okay. They have six That's of still, those. still, I mean, you divide but, that up, almost 1,000 people a day in a 13,000 gallon pool. Right, so, so our, our systems are, are very, very robust, yeah, very absolutely. strong. They're measured, I mean, we get at least two to three turnovers per hour, at least. Think about that for a second, Jared, because swim schools here are about the densest bather load that we For do, sure. Right, because you have about, you know, 700 to 1,300 kids a week. Now that's a week in about 25 to 40,000 gallons. So let's say 30,000 gallons, different. It's a, little a thousand different. people. Just do the math on that. You have a multiplier 100%. more of a bather load. Now they're not in there very long, but they are wearing bather products because I remember being in some of these uh, basements, well, these synagogues, and there's like all these shampoos and soaps on the wall and you can just see it, but it's all over the tile. So what, do you, what does your technology do about it? Well, uh, just to, there's a little bit more of a, I mean, we want to hear the really intense. Before the holidays, uh, we have a client who has about eight of those pools, and he has he had over 25,000 people on one day, one afternoon, morning and afternoon, before uh, one of the holidays, and he only knows that number because he ran out of towels. And they had to, <laughs> and they brought towels from all over the place, and they ran out of towels, and it was just like, oh, now you have to filter that water and disinfect that water and deal within that water within you know a morning and afternoon for many thousands. Wow. Now these are extreme situations. The vast yeah. majority of ritual baths are not like this, but yes, it's far more demanding, far more complicated, and that's why uh, I love you guys because yeah, well, you guys give me the best advice on you know the best chemicals and what to use. Well, we try. And that's how we've got we got friends over the years. Well, yeah, we yeah. try. Say, I'm glad you mentioned that specifically because we give you advice. We don't really have a business relationship here at all. That's true. That's so very important. You're not buying say. anything from us. And that's why I, I came <laughs> to, to, to bring, really, I, this, this is, is why really I came nice to this. I, I very much appreciate it. Over the years, I mean, Harold, I've picked his brain a bunch of times on different chemicals and different yeah. ways of treating things. And, and he's never asked for a penny, which is very, I mean, very meaningful. And uh, I've never bought anything from you guys. And yeah, I, well, I appreciate it. You did try the clarifier once. Yeah, we tried that. I did buy a few things, but uh, I'm sure that's not what changed the, the hey, we're still working that on really that changed, for a yeah. long time. That really changed the trajectory of it our did. business. It exactly. did. We're really working off of it. Although, yeah. I mentioned that one of the things, now it's very realistic, because now that you guys are selling chlorine, that would be very interesting to discuss, because that's not theoretical. That's something really a uh, subscription service for our customers. That would be very, very interesting for us. What percentage of your business is in Israel versus the United States? About 70% of our business is international. And about 50% is in the U.S., which is so, the international, outside of Israel. Yeah, we're based in Israel. We sell, we have from mikvahs from, I don't know, just in the past week, we've sent to, to Venice, to Germany, to, oh, we have in Ghana, and Africa, and wow. Bangkok. We have them all over the world. That's amazing. And we have zero salespeople on the team. That's great. Which so is, there's a need, and you're a specialist. Yeah, and we just focus getting the products better and better. That's all we focus on. And uh, if we had that extra key, you know, once they got our system, then we have a subscription service for the chemicals, for people who actually specialize in it, that would be beautiful. And that's something we should discuss after this podcast. All right. Jonathan, yeah. thank you for being thank here. Thank you so Great. much. Yes, it's always a pleasure. Everything. And thank I'm you for your country and your people, man. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for these tasty treats. Thank you. They look delicious. Thanks so much, guys. How do I sign up for the podcast? <laughs> no, I, no, I know. Where's the better podcast? be recording. It's called Rule Your Pool. Rule Your Pool. Yeah, you I can find it. it in any podcast store. I love that's, it. That's hilarious. I love it. You've been on the podcast before you listen to it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, can, do you mind taking a picture? He'll take a picture. Have a seat, man. That's hilarious. Oh. On a very serious note, really, I really have a lot of gratitude. Serious. Because I'm learning from you, man. Thank you. No, at the time, over the seven years ago, I yeah. drove you crazy about 50 bucks a clarifier, trying different stuff and searching for solutions. And now uh, um, I, I could be here and my whole team in, in Israel is selling and we're all over the world. And, and, and you were one of those first guys in the beginning who gave me the... Like a little bit of help when I was like clueless. Time. Really, I, I, I cannot thank you enough for that. You yeah. and Harold are really great. So We're really, happy to help you. Thank you so much. We're all yeah. about whatever you need and to do, man. We're awesome. Thanks, Jonathan. Well, Jared, there's a lot of people we could talk to. I would like to give Miguel's opinion because he's been teaching virtually at this thing, but he's never been here in person. He had COVID two years ago, and then he was stuck overseas last year, and he did it virtually, and I was actually in the Spanish class with him. Let me call him over here. Hey, Miguel. I was there too. 
And he actually, he did a phenomenal job a phenomenal on the fly job. making it virtual, virtual last year. Yeah. But uh, we'll see what he thinks about this year. Guest for the podcast, if you're up for it, what? it's right here. He's a true Orenda. Oh, yeah, have oh. a seat. Well, hold on. Let, uh, we'll do you first because Miguel can stay. We're actually going to make a pivot here. We're going to go to Kevin Cooley from Gaudi Pools. Have a seat. Right, I'm on the spot. My man. How have you been? Here, yeah. here, Kevin. Yeah, a pleasure. Your whole company. I saw Chet and Ali earlier. They came by, and Ali mm-hmm. got a headshot. Chet refused. He was, <laughs> I hope he listens to this and realizes that, that he missed an opportunity. He's not out of character. <laughs> Kevin, what's going on, man? How do you like this show? It's been great. Yeah. And I just came from probably uh, the best section I've been to in, in years here. It's definitely not ours. Yeah, it's not yours. It's, good. it's definitely <laughs> not ours. We got you here. It won't move you forward, and it was all about. Um, how everybody has their limbic system response to any situation, any trigger that happens, yeah. and how to put yourself in a mentality of switching to a different level of thinking, so not having your initial either fight or flight reaction, and switching into how can we resolve this situation, wow. and how that ties into to leadership. So, See, well, I like sessions like that that are helping you how to run a business and focus on certain things, not yeah. just mm-hmm. how to net a pool or whatever. We can yeah. all watch a video or get that with practice, but yeah. changing mentality and how you operate, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, that's truly helpful stuff. We first met your company, oh gosh, several years ago. I, was, I think yeah. it was right after COVID, although I had talked to Chet. So I actually swam in college mm-hmm. against Towson, which is where yep. Chet and Allie graduated the year before I came in. But we had that connection in swimming. We know a lot of the same people. And I remember coming to the office, like, was it right before Christmas? I don't remember. So what's your role with Gaudi Pools, and what keeps you coming back to the show with all your teams? Because you guys always bring your whole team. Yeah, we, we bring our whole team every year. Um, I'm the service manager at Gaudi Pools, so pretty much everything on our service side. We do everything from basic weekly service all the way up to full renovations, and we've actually just started building pools as well. Nice. Um, but I manage anything that's on the service side. Got it. Uh, so... We, we come every people, year. Man. They ask yeah. good questions. They think things through. I'm, I'm impressed with your team. There's a lot yeah. of them because they all came by and got a headshot in our photo booth. There's, yeah. There mm-hmm. was a lot of them. It's, uh, it's a good group of guys. And, and having that kind of, um, you know, happy mentality of everybody that they're able to joke around and have fun together is really important. They and do. that's one of the really important things for coming here. So it's really great for them to go to the classes and learn new things. But to come as a team together and have everybody here on a paid for work trip that is a combination of learning things, but also fun and some time you get to spend with your coworkers outside of the normal every day, okay, we're here to work, Right, um, is huge. So I think we won't stop bringing everyone here and that's the biggest reason. It's for the team morale and getting everyone together. Well, you're also, every time you're here, you're separating yourselves further from people who don't make the time to come educate. It shows like everybody in your company is here. They're all mm-hmm. taking classes. This is an They're investment for you guys because there's a lot of people. Yeah. And it's a lot of money too. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of yep. time out. It's not just dollars, it's opportunity costs. Like you're investing in your people and, and that's a really good thing. I know we've been texting back and forth about certain cool uh, mm-hmm. questions or problems that happen. I mean, everybody's got some problem pools. So my question to you is, ever since adopting our program a few years ago, what's your feedback? Be bluntly honest. We're clearly going to edit this yeah. to our favor either yeah, way. So yeah. Go ahead. You can cut out all the bad You're going to have sentences um, like, it sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's been night and day. And I told a, a few of your coworkers today, uh, when we made the jump, it was a lot of new changes and new things that getting everybody to really understand it all and on board with it took a little bit of time. But looking back three years till now, it was like a major overhaul back then. So it was, gosh, we got to get our calcium levels up. We got to do this differently. Everything we did with water chemistry, specifically focusing on LSI instead of on just those numbers and those ranges. It was so it was complete overhaul. And now you are year over year, we're just doing minor little changes and tweaks to make it better than it was. Every step along the way, you guys have been great. And every time we have a problem and we come to you, you tell us something, we implement it, and we've never had a situation where we go, darn, Arenda told us that. <laughs> we shouldn't have listened to them. It's always been like, yep, they were right. Right we again, right again. Each other. <laughs> yeah. Our customers love it, but between the two of us, Eric's had some terrible ideas. Yeah, I'm the always tension bringing here up we could names. cut with a knife, but let's not talk about our own internal issues. <laughs> there have been some mystery problems that you guys have brought to us mm-hmm. that Sometimes it doesn't involve our products. I'm thinking of the one that Chet called me about where he had to flock it. 
there mm -hmm. was, it, and part of the reason was it wasn't something that our chemicals could address. You already use our products, right? Mm -hmm. This was a pool that had just been taken on service. It wasn't a pool that they'd ever had. They were taking it over and it was a swamp. And we have a green pool cleanup, but this green pool cleanup took a lot out, but it didn't take everything out. There was this, you remember this pool? Like we just needed to break this was water. It, was it, like, this year? Uh, last year or the year before. And I told him, you need to flock this pool and vacuum it off, shut off circulation, get it to the floor and vacuum it up. And two, they did. Two years ago. Do you remember Those what the cause was? I don't remember what the cause was, but I remember the flock did it, they vacuumed it out and you recovered that pool. Yeah. What was the cause, do you know? Uh, we went to that pool many, many times, day after day after day, trying just about everything you could yeah. to resolve this issue, um, aside from flock, but just uh, stain and scale because it was green and we're trying to figure out the chlorine level's good. It's not algae, what is going on here? Why won't this color go away? The filter's getting cleaned daily, we're balancing yeah. it perfectly. And uh, sure enough, CJ went out there and, and thankfully he's got the eye for it. He noticed, sure enough, there's a firework sitting next to the pool. And huh. we made the connection between the fireworks that they had been launching and what came from them and fell huh. down into the pool, turning oh. it green. And that's when we flocked it, and I think we used a, a purge dose of SC-1000 as well, turned it right around, got it clean. But unfortunately, we were weekly servicing that pool, and it came out of nowhere green, and we never had this happen. So it was like, what is going on? Fortunately, when we found the answer, it wasn't us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but well, I, I've been saying this a lot lately, and you guys know in your business, just like most people do, a pool can either be a profit center for a pool service company, and the customer wins in that situation because the pool is behaving well, right? Mm -hmm. Or it's a massive liability. In that sense, what were the costs? I'm not asking you to actually quantify it, but just think about the costs of going back day chasing after day, your tail. chasing it, putting more stuff in, and all the time not looking good towards the homeowner because mm -hmm. the homeowner's like, well, these people don't know what they're doing. I'm really glad that you were able to identify. I'm glad we were able to provide a solution, even though it wasn't ours. Mm -hmm. Figure it out, recover afterwards. So. Anytime, man, we're happy to do it. You guys have been a great customer of ours. We want to thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And as I say to all of our customers, if there's an issue, you got to let us know because if we don't hear from you, we have no idea. Oh, yeah. So we appreciate you guys do communicate very well. Yeah. Well, do you uh, listen to the podcast, by the way? We do. I don't think I've ever listened to one live, um, but, but we go and, and listen to certain ones or the videos you put out on YouTube, um, the articles you put out. So there's, I, I'm not sure what else might be out there, so I might be speaking out of term here, but the resources you have and the way you're doing things with water chemistry is just a total different ball game to what a lot of chemical manufacturers are doing. Our guys have learned a lot from the resources you've provided. We appreciate you. Thanks Thank for stopping you. by. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for stopping by, man. Appreciate Thanks. it. All right. Here's your $300. Thanks for saying all this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Where'd Miguel go? Did we lose Miguel? Miguel, he gone, he gone. Miguel okay. didn't want to do this anyway, so we're just going to speak for Miguel. I, he said yeah. it was awesome. He said it was great. He was teaching a Spanish class earlier. I don't know if it was accurate or factual at all. I don't know what he was saying, but yeah. he seemed very confident Couldn't saying it. it. Uh, I know you are very fluent in Spanish. I am not, so I can't really tell, but he really seemed like he had command over the class. So, we did go stand in the room, though, to watch him teach for at least 10 minutes. Yeah. And it, he looked great doing it. Yeah, he really does. He's a good looking dude. So he's got that going for him. Well, anyways, we're going to pause this until we find somebody else. So uh, stay tuned. We will be right back with the Roll Your Pool podcast. All right, we are back from our brief intermission where Jared and I walked around this floor and saw it's a big floor this year. It is a very big floor, and we found Miguel. We found Miguel. That's the most important thing. Well, we didn't find him. I texted him, and he came to us. It was a lot easier. We could have just texted him earlier. I know. It would have taken us probably two hours to walk this whole thing, so it's a lot easier just to text him. But my boy, Miguel, you have been part of our company since 2020. You have been on the forefront, certainly, of the Spanish education, but you know our program just as well as anybody. This is your first Nespa show. It really is, yeah. yeah. Two years ago, you had COVID, and then last year you were stuck because you were out of the country, right? And you did it virtually, and I was in there holding a microphone, having no idea what you were saying. <laughs> but we everyone made in work. the room was yeah. nodding as if, I think they knew what you were saying. I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> well, that's just what I told them to do. Oh, I yeah, told them, did. just nod so my, just nod so my smile, boss so thinks I... that I'm doing a good job. They're like, yeah, he's doing a good job. 
<laughs> it's usually what I do. It work, it's worked so far, you know. Good for you. I was going to say, you taught a class this morning, seemed like you had good engagement. Eric and I were just in there literally just to watch you speak and command the room, but. Yeah, you, you, you definitely look a lot more fluid. I've been watching you train for a few years. You, you clearly have command of what you're doing now. So what's your impression of this show? First of all, I'm really happy to be here. I'm, I'm really glad to have the opportunity to teach in Spanish and, and the demand. I mean, it seems to be growing with the years. Obviously, I don't have the comparison from the last couple of years, but overall, as an industry, I think more companies and more, more manufacturers are investing in Spanish training and they're realizing that it's a very important part of our industry. So I'm really thankful to be part of that movement. And I like to partner up with people that also are training in Spanish. And there's very few of them, but it seems like every manufacturer, every brand out there is definitely putting an effort. And I would like to think that uh, As we Orenda was one of the pioneers and, and now Hassa has supported it very well too. So it's been a great time. It's been a great opportunity. And, and I'm glad we have a voice and I'm glad we have the opportunity to train these people and teach them in the language that they're more comfortable with. Since I don't understand what's being said, I know you do get a lot of questions. What is the feedback you're hearing from these people? Honestly, it varies, but a big part of them seem to be that this is something that they've heard for the first time. I love that. You know, especially when we're talking about things like the LSI or combined chlorine and things that are a little bit more complex, but they dig right into it, man. <laughs> They love it. So the fact that we have every other resource available just from their phone, they can access it, they can go listen to the podcast, they can watch the videos, it makes it very practical for them. Certainly at this show, there's a really well-represented Spanish-speaking population. We noticed sure. this years ago, if you remember, we were missing out on a huge percentage of the people walking by just because we can't speak the language. So yes, we want to teach people in what they're comfortable with, so that makes a huge difference, so we're grateful for it. Nice. Anything you want to say to the audience? Preferably in English, but if you want to make fun of us in Spanish, <laughs> start with Jared. It's fair game. We're just going to nod our heads. Pues, si entienden español, Nos dejan ahí un, un review en el, en el podcast, cinco estrellas. Got that word. Para que, I'm offended. Para que el Eric pueda seguir haciendo su podcast y, y yo también. Muchas gracias. Well, you have a Spanish podcast. What's that called? Controlando la Piscina. Where can they find that podcast? On Spotify, Apple Music, or directly through our app. For the listeners out there, everything we're doing in English, Miguel is the man that is making it happen in Spanish. We want to be able to be not just a multilingual company. We want everything that we're teaching these customers and you know, homeowners, whoever, to be able to read it in their native language, and we will continue to expand that. I Including go. the private trainings. We yeah. also have the, we also host the private trainings, and a lot of times, you know, for one person, it's impossible to be at two places at once, but we do have the virtual option, too, that they can sign up. It's entirely free, and, and uh, it's a good resource to use. Yeah, and up here, just one final note, there are a lot of companies where they'll have, you know, 10 guys and three of them speak Spanish better than English, or all of them speak Spanish, depending on the business you're in. But the owner of the company may speak English just fine, but the whole crew doesn't, right? So if you are listening to this and you have Spanish speakers in your business and you want to up their game in water chemistry and learn what we're teaching, Miguel's the man. Uh, what's your email? that you can put out, I guess we could put it in the show notes, but Jared would never read them anyway. It's show up Miguel at orrendatech.com mm -hmm. or ayuda at .com. Awesome. Miguel, thank you so much. We're going to wrap here because uh, there's customers here that need to talk to us. We appreciate all of you 207, cl hopefully climbing after this, uh, listeners. We do like to have fun with this. And we don't want to take ourselves too seriously, but what we teach, we do take seriously. We take your business seriously because we want you to be helped and have the best opportunity to be successful in the swimming pool industry. So thank you for listening. I hope you liked the new format. We tried to make this work, and I know Eric fumbled through it a little bit, but uh, we really do appreciate you listening, tuning in, and keep hitting us with questions, and reach out to us about new topics, anything you want to know. Happy to dig in, do the research, and give you our honest feedback. So thank you. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. This has been episode 133 of the Rule Your Pool podcast. Take care. 133. Jeez. Thank you for listening to Rule Your Pool, a podcast by Orenda Technologies. 
For more information on what we discussed in this week's episode, check the links in the description or visit www.horrendatech.com. I hope you find this show valuable enough that you tap that subscribe button and share it with your friends. You can also like us on Facebook and social media. With our help, you'll be able to rule your pool without over-treating it with chemicals and wasting money. I'll see you next episode. 